Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1206. Hey, if you want to download the sort code 1206 to 1209 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about time as we have so often before and how to calculate from time entered into the cell the total number of hours. Now, in this video, our goal is to do it in a single cell. Just look at the end and start times and get our 39 hours. Now, actually, this video is inspired by our Excel online teammates, Kevin and Chandu, who have recently done videos on this topic. And I certainly have done lots of videos. The mod function, I, that's the solution I'm going to use. I did a video, Excel Magic 286. 727, I did calculate night and day shift with lunch. Even in 1057, I did calculate night and day shift for working when we had text time values. Now, as always, when you're dealing with times, you have to know what a time is. 8 colon 0, 0 space and then AM or PM. When I enter it into the cell, most of us think that's 8, the number 8. But if I wipe away the number formatting, number group, drop down, and the eraser for number formatting is the general number formatting, watch this, a decimal, that's right. Time is a decimal between 0 and 1 that represents the proportion of a 24-hour day. So really, and I'm going to control Z to leave that there. Every time you enter 8 AM, Excel takes it and divides it by 24. That always gives us a decimal, which is a proportion of a 24-hour day. So underneath that number formatting is this decimal. Now, one of the reasons that they did that is because date times come into Excel and dates are actual integers. So they had to come up with a way to do uh, time and dates together. So any number between 0 and 1 will give us a uh, time. That means when we come up here and we actually make our calculation, and it's always the later time minus the earlier time, and I enter it, it looks like it's 8 AM. And I'm going to use the keyboard Control, Shift, Grave Accent, or tilde. The Grave Accent tilde key is to the left of the number 1. Boom. That will apply general number format. I can see that it's 0.33. If I actually wanted the 8 hours, I would have to then take that. And since down here, Excel divided by 24, we have to multiply by 24. And that would give us our 8. Now I'm going to Control Z because I want to leave that there and copy it down. Because looking at the decimals will help us realize that there's a problem when we get to night shift. PM to AM, that's a smaller decimal. That's 1 divided by 24. And this is 22 divided by 24. So we get a negative number. Now, there's a few ways we could deal with this. We certainly, down here, if we knew that the answer was 1.25, which is 3 divided by 24, and we had minus 0.875 as our result from subtracting 1 AM and 10 PM, we could simply add 1 to that, and that will give us the right number here. Well, you can do that with the if function. Our logical test, we check if our calculation for time is less than 0. Uh-oh, look at that. We simply take our time calculation and add 1. Otherwise, if it's not, we don't add 1. That's a beautiful formula, and lots of people use that. It's just much longer than our mod option. Now, the mod function calculates a remainder. And just to look at an example, the number and divisor arguments, that's numerator and denominator. So if I was to take 11 and divide it by 5, that would give me 2 remainder 1. And that's what the mod function does. It always gives us the remainder. Equals mod, we're going to use it as the numerator. We're going to take our later time minus our earlier time. And guess what? comma, we're always going to divide by 1. Now, right here, that would make sense because 0.33 divided by 1, well, it's 0 with a remainder of 0.33. So the mod function works perfect there. Control, Shift, tilde, or grave accent to get rid of it. And if I double click and send it down, wait a second. How come it's working on negative decimals? We think 
that the remainder would be minus 0.875, but no way. It calculates the correct answer, and the reason why it does comes from our algorithm. If you look in help, there's mod, numerator, denominator. There's the algorithm. Please take the numerator and subtract denominator. Remember, our numerator is the time value minus the denominator is 1 times int of numerator divided by denominator. And the key here is the int. And the int function always takes the integer down. So if we were to take 0.33333 and take the integer, it goes down to 0. If we take the int on a negative number, the int goes down, so it goes down to minus 1. So watch this. I put the algorithm here in the cell. This is n divided by d. So if we look inside here and hit the F9 key to evaluate, there's that negative decimal. Well, int is going to take the integer and always go down, so it gives us F9 minus 1. And what's 1 times minus 1? It's F9 minus 1. And look at that. Double negative of a 1 is like adding 1. So when we get a negative decimal here, it'll always double negative add 1, which will be perfect. And look, up here, it takes the numerator divided by the denominator. F9, that's 0.33. Well, int always goes down. So 0.33 gives us F9, 0. And 1 times 0, F9 is 0. So when it sees a positive number, it subtracts 0. And that's why the mod function works. And it is much shorter than doing that if. Now, down to our single cell formula, I'm going to use the mod function. And guess what? In the numerator, I'm going to take the entire column, because I don't want to use any of our cells over here. I want everything in a single cell. Now, already we're doing something unusual, because the mod function number argument is expecting a single item. And we just gave it a whole array of items. Not only that, but we don't want just the end. We want to subtract another entire column. Now, this is an array operation right here, direct. A bunch of items minus a bunch of other items. And guess what? When we do this calculation, it's going to simulate this whole column inside our formula. So if I highlight this in F9, there's all the numbers, 0 0.33, 0 0.16, 0 0.5, right? Boop, boop, boop. And there's our point minus 0.875. So it's simulated inside a single cell our entire column, Control Z come to the end comma, and we're going to do our second array operation. We're going to make the mod function spit out the whole column of correct answers. Because numbers getting a bunch of resultant numbers here, that's telling mod to spit out a bunch of answers. So when we evaluate with F9, the mod function, boom, boom. There's our 0.5. There's our 1.25. So rather than getting the minus 0.875, we get the correct 1.25. Control Z. That's not quite what we want. We need to multiply it by 24. There's yet another array operation. That 24 will be multiplied by each one of the items that the mod is spitting out. So when I highlight an F9, wow, look at that. Our exact resultant array of all of our hours worked. Now we need to add these, but think about this. That's a resultant array from an array operation, Control Z. If I were to put this inside of the sum function, that number one argument cannot handle that array operation, meaning the sum function will not add it unless we use the special keystroke Control Shift Enter. However, since we're adding, we can use a different function. I can use the sum product function. It's one of five functions that actually can handle array operations without the special keystroke. Sum product, index, lookup, aggregate, and chi square dot test are the five functions in Excel that can do. Array calculations without the special keystroke. Now, the sum product normally takes array 1, array 2, array 3, multiplies all the arrays, 
and then adds them. So check this out. We're actually just going to use the one array here, the first one, because we know that it will handle the array calculation. And because we're only using one array, it'll only do the sum part, not the product. So all we have to do is close parentheses and enter. And there we have it, our 39 hours. Wow, that is amazing. We did mod with an array operation, multiplied by 24, slapped it inside of some product, and we have our single cell solution. All right, we'll see you next video.